You ever wondered what makes the best grilled cheese? Is it the cheese? Or is it the bread? So today we're making some grilled cheese. We're gonna see what really makes the best grilled cheese. Is it the bread? Is it the cheese? Is it the preparation? Um, I'm gonna start basic, then we're gonna get fancy, and then at the end I'm gonna try to do a grilled cheese that is my favorite top of grilled cheese. All right, so like the basic control that we're gonna have with all the grilled cheese here is the fact that all the bread is gonna start off toasted. I'm mostly going to be using white bread, just basic white bread, but I will be using like a, a Tuscan style bread as well for a fancier style sandwich that we have planned on for a little bit. So with this sandwich here, really all I want to do is just like start off with some butter. We're going to like just kind of spread it the best we can on each side. This sounds way easier in my head. Okay, uh, I guess the butter did not chill enough like I was hoping it would, so we'll do the next best thing. We'll go ahead and slice off some butter. Put it in our pan over here. And we'll just like get it going this way. Get enough butter down, because I mean obviously bread's not going to stick. And just take one of your sods, just put it down like that, right over top of the butter. And what this will do, this bread will actually act like a sponge and it'll just start absorbing more and more of that butter as it goes. And we're not gonna leave it here long. We've already had it toasted once. We're not gonna want it to burn. And we just want both sides to be kind of equally buttery. Yeah, now that it's warmed up, you can actually spread it a little bit more. But again, we don't wanna go too far with it. We want butter on both sides, but we really, really, really do not want to cook this bread any further because it is gonna be cooked again. With the grilled cheese. I have a spatula right there, but I don't know why I'm making this more difficult on myself. Okay. So that should be good enough for this piece. Let's get a tad bit more butter in here. Come on, come on, come on. Oh, I got balance. Get that back into this pan too. This pan's gonna see a lot of butter today. Okay, now we'll take our next piece right here. We'll bring it over. And this is our second kitchen, so like everything seems a little bit crammed in here, but I got just enough room to make this as perfect as possible. I'm trying my best not to get this <laughs> this camera too buttery. I shouldn't even actually need anything. I had a pair of tongs here as well, just in case things get too crazy. So our first sandwich here is gonna be like your basic grilled cheese. Um, we got some like, literally some craft singles here of American cheese. I'm gonna do it basic, just one sauce on some warm bread. And we're gonna kind of taste test them as we go. I kind of know basically how these really taste. I've, I've, I've had like a million grilled cheeses in my life. And if you watch the streams enough, you know I'm a cheese guy. I love my cheese. Okay, it came to this point. That bread got really hot, which is a good thing in some ways because now with this still being really warm, we can take our cheese, which I had opened beforehand, but not opened well enough, apparently. Okay. Oh man, it looks like it's gonna tear. Okay, just open it all the way. Uh, yeah, come on. Full slice of slightly teared cheese. Not bad. Okay, get it right down on there. And of course, our bread, which has been buttered on each side. We're gonna get a tad bit more butter into the pan. Move it over so the butter doesn't burn. Try to clean up that space just a tad bit. After this one, I'll probably have to break for a second and go get some paper towels or something to really clean this up some. I mean, nothing really gets like 
tainted. This first experiment I really wanted to do right here is first the obviously going original classic grilled cheese. Started to get a little bit of that butter burnt, but not too much, not not enough that it's gonna make it like too bad. Just kind of keep the sandwich away from it so nothing gets tainted or ruined. Okay, so really the idea is here is just to condolet the bread toast again, and it's gonna seep up through. I mean, we've all made a grilled cheese before. I'm not trying to overcomplicate this or make this anything that it. <laughs> Basically, I'll just leave it at that. I'm not trying to overcomplicate it. It's a grilled cheese. So all we're doing is heating up the bread, getting it toasted again, making sure the cheese melts. Underestimated how hard it was going to be to flip a sandwich with one hand. Okay, get it back over there. Okay, so it looks like it's already started to melt in this top piece. What we want it to do is kind of seep through and melt through this uh, bottom piece here. So it'll actually, the cheese will act as the bonder, and then, hey, our grilled cheese. I just started wondering if anybody's really ever just like grilled cheese, and I don't mean on a hamburger. I mean, we've all been to that barbecue where somebody's got a slice of cheese, and they put it on top of a burger right before it was finished. That way it would melt down a little bit, but like, where did the term grilled cheese come from? I did not look that up beforehand. I mean, now I'm just curious. Okay, not quite there yet. I was hoping it would melt a tad bit better. It obviously did not melt that piece. So what we'll do, oh geez. Back to the hands. The hands work better. Okay, get another flop while burning your fingers. If you burned your fingers, you did it right. Okay, one classic move with a grilled cheese too, when you got the hot bread on the hot cheese, you give it the press. I'm curious about how these will really turn out toward the end too. Like these are all gonna be very, very, very different grilled cheese sandwiches. So toward the end, I'm really curious on like the differences between all of them, especially these first two. Like these, these, I've heard so much about these first two sandwiches obviously the classic you know we all know the classic but then the next one after this let's go ahead and get this pan off the heat i think it's hot enough for now so we're not burning anything and then uh yeah the, just curious about this second one um i think it's probably good enough maybe get another press on there i'd love to hear those crunch sounds i was actually talking to stacy Right before I came in here to shoot this video, how it's kind of funny how the crunch sound on videos has become so satisfying for so many people. Like it started with like ASMR and now we're in just like so many other videos. And as we get through a lot of these other sandwiches, I'll kind of speed up the process a little bit. But as our control off the heat, let's go ahead and slice this bad boy open. Right off the fire. To cut it fairly well and this is your classic craft american cheese grilled cheese sandwich really buttery really good it's really hot in this room and super classic you know you can't really go wrong with it Not really the cheese you're going to find if you're looking for a cheese pull. But very good. Okay. On to the next sandwich. Okay, so this next sandwich that we're going to do is one that I've never tried. And it's not new to me. Um, it's not new at all. But the flavor profile will be new to me. Let me move this pan over, it's getting a little hot. So it is the mayo or mayonnaise on the bread. And this time I'm actually going to, I don't know how to, how I should really do this. Uh, they say to put it on the outside in, in, in place of butter. So I'm gonna use American cheese again. 
Um, but I guess first, we'll kind of keep the same control going on as the last time. And I know this is just like super basic mayonnaise. It's usually just what we keep here at home. I don't really use any fancier style mayo. Kind of like basic mayo. I'm not really big on like the ones that taste like they're more yolky or anything like that. Not really big into sweet mayo myself. I know a lot of people are and I have nothing against it. It's just not my favorite. Let's see if we have enough to evenly spread on here. Does not look like it. So we'll borrow some from this one. Kind of learn from our mistakes as we go. This is the first time I've cooked this though. Again, it, the idea and everything, I know it's not new. Um, there for a while it was like a big viral thing. People were putting mayo on the outside of their uh, bread for grilled cheese because they were saying, I mean, it's, I mean, basically the same as like margarine. I mean, it's, it's just like oil and egg basically. I'm gonna have to use a little bit more, but I've never tried it. I, I was always skeptical. So this will kind of like, I guess, bring part of that to fruition, kind of in my curiosity there. Will it be good? I don't know. And again, I'm gonna kind of speed through this one a little bit more because we have a couple more sandwiches to make um, or a few more. There's something I want to do toward the end. Okay, so let's go ahead and get our bread in the pan. Get our pan back on the heat. And I feel like we're really gonna have to watch this one a little bit more. Um, go ahead and get more mayo for the other side over there. Kind of get everything ready as we go. It's gonna take a lot more mayo than what I thought it was going to off the bat, that's for sure. I feel like I'm gonna have to really watch this carefully too, because it's gonna cook fairly quick. I can already hear the sizzle. I gotta say one thing though, but it doesn't smell bad at all. Um, again, I was kind of skeptical about it, didn't know how to feel. This far into it, I'm not feeling bad about it. But we're not there yet, and the sandwich isn't finished yet, so we're gonna. Keep going on. That's about all I'm really going to be able to get on there. Okay. Look back to the sandwich. Give it a quick flip. One thing I can already... Ow. 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 Okay. Tongs. One thing I can already say, though, is the fact that it it doesn't crisp up as, as fast as the, the butter does. But we're only one side in. It does have a very nice color to it. Oh man, I'm, I'm actually getting genuinely excited for this now. So we just flipped it. And I think I'm gonna cook this other piece. And then put cheese side down on that one. Go ahead and get the cheese out really quick so we don't gotta worry about that like we did last time. And I'm only gonna use one slice of cheese again. I did on the last one, I'll do it on this one. Keep them kind of the same because these two, I actually wanted to do in a comparison, like is butter better or is mayonnaise better? Mm, yeah, that's got a great color on it. Let's go ahead and get this bad boy off of here. Get this other one on. Go ahead and get more mayonnaise on it. Feeling good about this. Who would have thought though, really? It's like, I don't know. Who really did think of it first? That's something else I didn't look up before this video. I didn't think of anything as far as looking up any references. I just kind of went with it. I talked about cheese a lot on the video game stream, so. I thought coming back to some cooking videos, which I haven't done a cooking video in so long. Um, I actually have a separate channel I'd created a long time ago where there's only one single cooking video on it. I did a lasagna and I never revisited it. It was something I always wanted to do and I just really never did for some reason. <clears throat> okay, so really want this to kind of go well, so I don't want it to overcook. Let's go ahead and grab it. Try not to do that. Broke off a little piece of bread. Grab it, flip it. Oh yeah, perfect. 
perfect. A little bit more done actually than what I would have wanted it to, but I still think that is gonna be a okay. Get this, oh man, this guy, pretty crispy actually. Again, still not as crispy as butter, which is kind of interesting. I don't really know what the profiles between the two would make them so different, but I'm guessing there's some property in there. Somebody probably knows that I do not. Let's get our press going on. I don't know why, but this always does such a better job. Giving a little press kind of gets that heat insulated a little bit more. It almost really looks like it even melts the cheese a little faster. Not depressing, but the mayonnaise, but I could be wrong. The pan did get chilled down, so I can't see it's the hot pan. Um, I really should have got a different spatula for this. Okay, the cheese looks melted. Let's go ahead and pull this off. Get it down, okay. Get this off the heat. Tongs out of the way. Let's see. Let's give it a. Let's see. What do I have? What do I, have? I gotta clean off this a little bit. Oh. Still got some crunch going on. Interesting. Maybe, honestly, even more of a cheese pull. You can't really see it. Again, there's not really much of a cheese pull to American cheese. I guess there is if you put enough in there. Like if I put a chunk of like Velveeta in there or something. Let's give it a try. Wow. Wow. <laughs> wow. I don't, I don't know what else to say. This is... This is, this is a game changer. I never thought it would make that big of a difference. Wow. <laughs> I might legit like that better than butter. Oh my God. <laughs> mm. And that cheese. I don't know how well you can see that. Nice and melted and almost said buttery. Mm. If you haven't tried it, I will say it's a must try. That is that is really good. Really good. Next sandwich. So this time we're gonna start with a Tuscan Wat loaf or a bread. I've already got it pre-toasted. The pan has been preheated. I already went and put some more mayonnaise on that. I did not think uh, my control for today was going to be basically all toasted bread and butter, except for the exception of the mayo. And I've been proven to be a believer. Mayo goes on the outside of a grilled cheese. So we got it ready. We're going to go ahead and get this down. One side was perfectly toasted. And the other side had one in the middle. It didn't really fit in my toaster well, so I had to improvise. And this is going to be a harder grilled cheese to pull off. This is going to be a more fancy style grilled cheese, and I really mean that. Um, I don't, do I think it's going to be good? I don't know. Um, that's all I can say. I'm hoping for the best, and I mean really hoping for the best, but I do not know. Um, we are using two different cheeses in this instead of one. It is not American cheese. We are using a, uh, well, a brie and gorgonzola cheese. It, will that make a good grilled cheese sandwich? Again, I do not know. Part of me just says no. That's what my brain tells me. It's like not gonna be great. Um, but I've been wrong before. I did not think I would like mayonnaise. Now I think I will always use mayonnaise on a grilled cheese. I, I couldn't really think of what really it was that made it stand out so much. And then after I let Stacy try it and she said that it was more savory. And I could not agree more. That's probably exactly what it is. Like having the mayonnaise, it's like a tad bit more savory. And 
I mean, that's really what a grilled cheese already is. I mean, it's a savory, savory thing to have. And an even more savory grilled cheese, I really just don't think you could go wrong with that. And this is going to be a harder one to pull off, like I was saying a second ago. Um, see, that's the thing about a gorgonzola and a brie cheese. They are a lot softer um, than your... Uh, sorry, I am very predominantly right-handed, so I gotta switch it back to my other hand. This is a lot easier to flip though, which is very nice. Um, but yeah, they're cheeses that are a lot more delicate. They're soft cheeses. Gosh, this bread is so much easier to work with. This might be the bread I use for the next part of the video as well. Uh, when I do my favorite type of grilled cheese, it is one that I kind of developed when I was in my younger 20s, um, living alone, kind of experimenting with food. Uh, sometimes, you know, when you're younger and you first move out, you don't really have as many as the groceries as your parents had when you moved out. So you have just like a bunch of random stuff in your refrigerator. It's not this, it will be the, the next grilled cheese that I'm referring to, but um, you just got a lot of stuff in your refrigerator and you're just like, yeah, you know, I'll throw it all together. Uh, maybe it'll be good, maybe it won't. I'll still eat it either way because I don't want to starve to death. And um, so that's kind of how I came up with that one, you know, <laughs> not really fighting starvation. That sounds horrible, but just being in a younger state of mind, a different place and everything. Okay. So as this one goes on, we'll have to kind of really honestly take it off and then add it back to the pan again. Let's try to do it like we did last time. Oh yeah, that is a great color. I love that. And somebody might say I might be cooking this more than their style. I really like that golden, maybe a slot to pass golden. Um, that's just me. If you like, you know, grilled cheese, uh, with less crunchy toast or maybe a less color on it than this. That's un understandable, you know, we all like our own things. Let me go ahead and take this off the heat because I don't want it to burn because we have a lot we got to do right now. Okay, I don't know how I can do this other than stop the camera, add it, and then add it back. So I'm going to add the brie on one side and the gorgonzola on another side. And in just a second, I'll start this video back up and <laughs> we'll... Cook it, taste it, and we'll see what it's like. All right, so I've applied, <laughs> that's a weird way to put it, the brie and the gorgonzola. If you haven't had brie, it's a very mild, fancier cheese. It's it's really hard to spread when it's still, I don't want to say cold, it's sat in here for a bit, it's came to room temperature, but it's a hard cheese to spread. It's really good on crackers, really good to enjoy. Um, I put it in a lasagna before, It, it it's a really nice cheese, with other things and on its own it's really good too it has a weird almost cabbage smell that sounds off-putting to some people but it's actually pretty good and then we have our gorgonzola gorgonzola it might be off-putting right off the bat just looking at it it's kind of like a mild more savory blue cheese if i had to compare it to anything both of these are very unique cheeses uh they have really good applications to use them in and i wanted to really see what it would be like in a more fancy grilled cheese. Let's see, let's make sure this is, yeah, it's up to heat. So let's add this in there. We still got a lot of that residual oil from the mayonnaise beforehand. All we're doing is trying to re-toast this bread. It's already got such a crunch to it. At first I was skeptical. I was thinking this is not gonna be good. Um, you know, sometimes, Things are just too rich or things are just too savory or things are just there's a lot of certain foods that you you just don't really want to hit sometimes you know like when you try to go fancy with certain foods and sometimes you realize it's better to just not go fancy and maybe it's better to just keep it as basic as it always was cooked it a little bit more than i wanted to still got decent good crispy flavor not burnt so that's good and now that it's really sitting there it's Starting to get a better color to it as well. Okay, this pan has heated up quite enough, I think. So, just look at that though. All right, let's take it off the heat. 
maybe go a little back and forth with the, the tongs here. It looks like it's already melted some too, which is exactly what I wanted. I did not think it would be that well, and that's exactly what I wanted it to do. All right, let's go ahead and pull this bad boy off. It's sticking very well. That's awesome. This is, might be, <laughs> this might just be way better than I initially thought it was going to be. Let's get some cut in there. Oh, that is an awesome crunch. <laughs> this is really is the moment of truth. Is a fancy grilled cheese really worth it? Uh, let's see what it looks like on the middle here. It didn't quite melt as much as I wanted it to. It did melt. I can feel it in there, but oh yeah, you can see that right there. That gooey cheese melting together. Oh man, that is going to be one awesome solid bot. <laughs> okay first off very rich it really is it's very 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 rich but it is it's good if you if you really do like a lot of these oh and the cheese is just oozing out of all sides mm. oh well i just got cheese lava in the floor it is melting like crazy oh watch that melt oh man <laughs> i did not think this was going to be good it was just melting like crazy though so much cheese melt action cheese lava mm. okay this is a good sandwich. I was skeptical. I didn't know if fancier cheeses was the way to go. Again, I didn't know, would it be too decadent? Would it be too rich? It is very good. If you don't like a lot of those fancier cheeses, you're not gonna like it. It, it, it has a salt factor. I personally love this. I can feel the salt factor from it, just that little bit that I ate. I'm gonna go ahead and clean up a little bit, do the next sandwich, I really want Stacy to try this while it's still hot, so I'll see you on the next sandwich. Okay, <laughs> so this is going to be our last grilled cheese. I was going to do another one after this, but after that last one, it was just so rich. I don't think I can handle any more grilled cheese than I, which is something you won't hear me say often. Normally, I won't turn down cheese, <laughs> but it, it's gotten a little rich. So instead of ending it on one that I thought about doing, I was going to add all the cheeses together and make a crazy grilled cheese sandwich. But like, I think we'll just end it on my personal favorite grilled cheese, my grilled cheese. This is basically a recipe I came up with on my own because again, uh, basically the story I was telling a little while ago about just being younger in my early twenties and just kind of like grabbing what was in the fridge one night and just cooking some stuff up. So I was going to use the mayo again, but that's not what I used back then. So I decided to go back to the butter. I'll go ahead and turn this pan back on because I did not do that. Okay. So I already pre buttered this bread. Um, and I'm only going to do one side this time, just one side because the next element is going to be completely different. We've done the American cheese. We've done the brie and the gorgonzola. Um, this time we're gonna be using some provolone, which I love a good provolone on a sandwich. Uh, it, these are two cheeses I used to keep a lot um, when I was younger and still like to keep a lot in the house too and monster. Um, and then at last, but definitely not least some cream cheese and yes cream cheese it is a awesome application to use for a grilled cheese sandwich so this one it goes in parts you retoast your bread and again you only butter one side because we're putting that uh, cream cheese on there and this is also a pretty rich sandwich this is one of those sandwiches like 
I could think of a bunch of different scenarios to have it, <laughs> um, but it's definitely one of those like you kind of want to pair it with something. It's it's one of the things Stacey and I talked about a second ago about that last grilled cheese sandwich. It's kind of in the same boat, and this time we're kind of just using the butter on the other side once it's melted. Really didn't learn my lesson on the spatula. I've left this room three times now, and you think I would have grabbed another one? I did not. So all we're doing is toasting up the bread. The side's nice and buttery still. We'll give it another flip here in a little bit because this will be the outside. I want the inside to be pretty firm. And I want that crunch on the inside. I want that on the outside as well, but I really want that butter to melt differently. I'm getting the tongs back. Did not learn my mess lesson with that spatula. It is not good for bread. Other things, yes, bread, definitely not. Okay, so let's grab our bread, get the flip. Could go a little bit longer. But I'm not trying to really get this overcooked because it's got to go right back on here again. So just keep a good check on it. You want the butter to melt. Not too much though. We really want it to crisp up, get firm. Looks like we're about where we want to be. And I think it's probably good right there. Does not take long to toast up the bread for this. That's right about where you want it. You want the, the butter melted. Let's go ahead and grab this other piece. Put it on there. Butter slide down just like the other one first. You got to really work with your pattern here because another thing, one, you don't want the butter to overcook. Overcooked butter is not great. And you also do not want your bread to be overcooked either because once again it has to cook again but it also has to warm up cream cheese and melt two other slices of cheese so what i'm gonna go do now is i'm gonna go ahead and let this cook i'm gonna go ahead and put cream cheese on this side when this one comes off i'm gonna have cream cheese on this side and when i get that finished i'll see you then okay so we've got the cream cheese applied both of these still just subpar on toasted not all the way and it's just a lot layer of cream cheese on both sides you do not want to make super thick layers of cream cheese it might still be good i don't know i've never done it with really thick layers but i feel like it could get really really messy so we're gonna add our munster cheese on one side then our provolone cheese on the other okay so we're gonna obviously place these two together and we're going to go right back onto the pan. Let me put it back on the heat for a little bit. Get some heat going on. Maybe get just a tad bit more butter in the pan. It's very soft now. This is where I wanted it to be when I first started. But that did not happen. There we go. Right in there. Just get a good surface area going on with it. This is a good time for that spatula. Stir the butter up, make sure the surface area is pretty good. And that is a clean sink, don't worry. I know somebody might be complaining I got a spatula out of the sink. I did just do that. But that's a clean sink. Everything in here has been cleaned very well before I ever started doing anything back here. Now I want the spatula back. Let's let's just give it a rinse one. Well, rinse I got a paper towel sitting right here dab both sides because I do not want water on the spatula let's give it some press and this again is definitely my favorite grilled cheese I've loved this grilled cheese I haven't had it actually in probably about a year and a half maybe two years it's been a very, very long time since I've had this grilled cheese sandwich. This is my absolute favorite. It's so creamy. It's it, it's a little rich like the last one. I'm going to go ahead and turn the heat off, but leave it on. The uh, I don't want it to burn. I still want some heat to get through. Um, I really want these cheeses to melt. It's one of the best parts about the sandwich. is having all of these melted together. And I really do 
like to press. A lot of people may say don't press your grilled cheese sandwich. I say press it as much as you want to. <laughs> what have you got to lose? You want a flat boy? You want a thick boy? One of my other favorite uh, grilled cheeses from my youth was actually in a grilled cheese press. My grandmother actually bought. I can't remember where. I do know it was like a second hand shop. Um, she used to shop in a lot of second hand shops growing up. And um, she found this grilled cheese press. It was cast iron. And uh, she may still have it. I'm not sure. But it was cast iron. And it had these clasps like at the end right here where you just clasp it down. And it would really like press the bread together and make it super, super taut, super crunchy. Just, oh man, that was, that was my favorite thing ever. Probably should have left that on just a tad bit longer, but I think I think we'll be okay. Oh yeah, cheeses are melting pretty well. Let's say we're good. Okay, let's go ahead and pull it off. Put it on plate here and give it one last slice for the knot. Oh yeah, super crunchy. You, I can already see the cheese. This is exactly what I've always loved about it. It's just so creamy. I mean, it's it, again, this is really rich. It's good to pair with something else if you can. But if you're just super hungry and in a pinch or it's late and you just want something just like super, super rich, melty, got more cheese lava. Mmm. 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 And an awesome cheese pull. Can't beat <laughs> that cheese pull. Mmm. All right. So out of my favorites, this is my, still my favorite. <laughs> still. Um, I was really impressed to see what the mayonnaise can do for a grilled cheese sandwich. This is very interesting to me. I'm going to put this other half back on the heat just for a minute so it'll still be really hot for Stacy when she gets to try it here in a second. Very, very interesting though with the mayonnaise. Honestly, interesting with the more fancy style brie gorgonzola with the i think tuscan bread very good very good an awesome experience an awesome experiment and an awesome way to show some of you guys maybe some different ways to make some grilled cheese sandwiches and maybe it might be something you'd be interested in maybe not i don't really know uh, i do thank you for watching though it was really awesome having you along the way these grilled cheese sandwiches are all worth trying the regular, obviously, is the classic with the American cheese and butter. And then trying the mayonnaise out. It was something that was just, like, really big a while back. Um, I don't really know how many people are still putting mayonnaise on the outside of their grilled cheese, but it's really good. Recommend trying it if you never have. Um, honestly, if you want to go fancy, I went into it thinking I would tell you not to. I'm coming out and just saying, try it. It was excellent. I loved it that sandwich with the gorgonzola and the brie <laughs> that was amazing and then of course my favorite i gotta recommend my favorite it, it is a very creamy awesome you got the cheese pull from the provolone and the monster melting together you've got that creaminess from the cream cheese and then of course you know the butter on the outside you can't really go wrong with butter still so I'm going to go ahead and get off here. If you haven't already liked and subscribed, please do. I'm going to be posting more of these videos on YouTube. Um, and if you ever watch videos uh, for gaming, I also stream on YouTube. If you haven't watched any of those videos, you can see it on the channel. Or catch me on Twitch and Facebook. I'm on there pretty much almost every night. I'm going to be doing more of these cooking videos. I've got a couple more already planned. I'm hoping to work into the next couple of days. And I thank you all so much for watching. I still recommend you try these. And if you not, I understand. But if you really want a really good cheesy time, I recommend it. Take it easy. Have fun. I'm out.